So do we need a mic? Sing okay. Yeah. This is point on okay. So good afternoon. I'm Suraj and Samin is my thesis advisor. I'm from uh, Indian Institute of Technology Madras, India. So I'm going to talk on the effect of confinement on the decay of water strings. So this is the general outline of my talk. I'll give a general introduction to what what is SR and then what vortex rings. And uh, in the case of confined, confined environment, the evolution of vortex rings and uh, what is the motivation for doing that one. Then uh, in this study, we rely on numerical methods. So uh, the num that computational method that is used, I'll explain briefly and I'll show our results that whatever we have obtained and I'll with observations, I'll conclude. So in general, vorticity, you can uh, define a mathematically as a curl of velocity, but when you are asked to define a vortex, it's very difficult, but it's an intuitive concept. So in general, what you can say, flow structures with concentrated vorticity uh, can be called as vort vortex or vortices. And uh, in the case of vortex rings, the it's of toroidal shape, that is a uh, vortex of toroidal shape with a uh, axis spinning forming a closed loop. These vortex rings can be formed uh, in the case of uh, a, a piston cylinder arrangement or can be when a circular disc is impulsively moved inside a fluid. So now if you see the literature, most of the studies on water strings have been done on either infinite domain or semi-infinite domains. Uh, uh, infinite in the sense uh, unbounded domain, uh, unbound uh, vortex rings in unbounded fluid and uh, semi-infinite in the sense uh, uh, the vortex rings impinging on wall, something like that. However, the there are cases which we faced where the vortex rings are in confined domains where, for example, Akim et al. have studied the effect of vortex ring parameters in extinguishing fire in oil and gas wells. So this is a case of what I'm saying in confined environment, but he have studied the application of that one. So in fuel injection, they have found uh, when the fuel is injected inside a gasoline engine, it forms uh, what is ring like structures inside the cylinder. Now, uh, while studying the bl blood flow inside the heart, they have um, when the blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle, vortex rings are formed and these vortex, studying these vortex rings and the quality of these vortex rings can predict the uh, cardiac health. Now, in the study we uh, use computational method and uh, we are using lattice Boltzmann method. Actually it originates from the kinetic theory of gases. So in general we, what we can say it represents a fluid flow beyond uh, the validity of Navier-Stokes equation or it's more fundamental. And uh, from the computational point of view, if you see it's uh, more easy that the simplicity of implementation is there. Sorry. Now coming to the vortex rings in confined environments, Bersier in 79, he made a theoretical analysis and modeled the uh, stream function for vortex ring in Z infinitely long tube and it was the uh, case with inviscid flow. In 2012, uh, Stuart et al, they did an experimental study on the confined vortex rings and how these, con uh, how these confinement affect the decay of the vortex rings. So it was a radially confined environment and they produced the vortex ring, they had a mechanism and they changed the confinement and by changing that ratio, they got different decay patterns. So, uh, and uh, they studied it for different confinement ratio, which they defined as the, ra the, the ratio of diameter of the vortex ring to the diameter of the confinement. 
and the decay grows exponentially with the, their their findings was that decay goes exponentially with increasing confinement ratio here one thing that has to be noted is like they uh, defined the confinement ratio and studied the uh, effect of confinement ra ratio just by changing the uh, size of the confinement they kept the size of the vortex rings constant and here in uh, 2015 Daniela, they came up with a viscous model for representing what string inside the rad radially confined domain. So later on in 2017, they have, uh, here it was, uh, uh, the paper was with a circular cross section of vortex core and they later modified the viscous model to accommodate a elliptic cross section for the uh, vortex core. Now this is the computational details. So the vortex ring inside cubically confined domain. So here is the vortex ring and uh, this is the ring radius R naught and uh, sigma naught is my the core radius that is also circular. So this vortex ring is kept inside a cubical domain and with uh, the side walls of length uh, L and along the axial direction I am taking periodic boundary condition. The confinement ratio in our study is defined as 2 R naught by L and an aspect ratio for the vortex ring we are defining by, uh, sorry, uh, by sigma naught by R naught. Now this is a general brief description of the lattice Boltzmann method. Here actually we are solving, not solving uh, Navier-Stokes equation, we are solving a Boltzmann equation where it is a, which is an evolution equation for the probability distribution function F and uh, we initialize the F distribution with an equilibrium distribution which can be computed from the given velocity field and uh, density and uh, the progression of the lattice Boltzmann method is uh, through two steps called uh, collision and streaming. In collision we relax the distribution function towards an equilibrium distribution function. Then uh, in the streaming step the collided distribution functions are streamed to the uh, neighboring sites. Now the macroscopic variables which are of interest to us are calcula calculated by uh, taking appropriate moments. So coming to the vortex ring inside the confined domain. So ours is a uh, axisymmetric vortex ring initially with uh, without seal that means that there is an asymmetrical velocity and the initial vorticity distribution is uh, taken to be uh, a Gaussian distribution based on a paper Sharif et al. So the vorticity distribution uh, is Gaussian and uh, the where uh, here the gamma naught is the initial circulation. So now the omega theta is the asymmetrical vorticity that is only vorticity component that we are having and we define the Reynolds number based on that gamma sorry here it is it should be gamma naught uh, the initial circulation and uh, mu is the kinematic viscosity. So this is just a movie. This is the how the vortex ring evolves inside the confinement domain. You can see uh, our confinement is not axisymmetric and uh, that induces an asymmetry in the evolution of the vortex ring. So, so that the movie that was for uh, the confinement ratio 0.52 aspect ratio uh, that value and uh, 0.2885 and uh, Reynolds number of 1600. So to uh, uh, quantify the uh, decay of the vortex ring, the, these are the quantities generally that we are calculating that maximum vorticity at the core, then total kinetic energy, uh, then uh, circulation uh, around the vortex core, uh, cross section area of the vortex core, radius of variation. So it, it, it generally uh, apart from the area it, it will generally give if some distortion is there to the core of the vortex ring. So here the main difficulty is the 
identifying the vortex and the vortex core and tracking that one. In this study, we rely on the Q criterion where the So Q criterion that is defined as the norm squared of the rotation tensor minus the shear strain tensor and half of that one. So yeah. So as I said in general uh, in order to vary the confinement ratio defined as the ratio of ring radius to confinement radius there are two ways we, which, which we can attain different confinement ratios either by uh, changing the ring radius or by changing the confinement size. So here is a initial uh, uh, picture of how the effect of changing the confinement ratio looks like. This is the case uh, decay patterns. Uh, here the size of the vortex ring is changed. So here what we get is like there is a decrease in the decay rate. So decay becomes slower. So these are the value uh, that uh, relevant parameter that we use for this uh, this particular simulation. Now the same thing when we do the same uh, increase in confinement ratio by changing the confinement size. So what happens is that there is an increase in decay rate. So the decay becomes faster as you can see. So these are the, the total kinetic energy that I'm using and the maximum uh, uh, vorticity at the center of the core. Now, as I have shown the movie, when the vortex ring evolves in that cubical domain, there are some asymmetry that is getting formed. So the some of the quantities uh, identifying the vort uh, vortex core and uh, tracking that one. So we do on two different planes. One is on the Y plane and on a diagonal plane. So in order to accommodate the or to quantify on different planes since that uh, there is an asymmetry. So here that the uh, next set of that uh, values that I am going to show you are for Reynolds number 1600 and for uh, uh, aspect ratio of uh, 0 0.2885. So is a initial uh, picture of different quantities how it varies these are on a diagonal plane. So here you can see that uh, both uh, uh, that uh, omega max that is the maximum vorticity at the core and uh, circulation they are decaying and uh, however that uh, area of the vortex ring and that radius of variation both increases. So the area of the core increases means uh, that uh, vorticity spreads. Uh, and the uh, vortex ring thickens. Now, here I am showing the variation of circulation. These are on two different planes. Here you can see that the center line that is for a uh, uh, CR value, confinement ratio value of 0 0.33, and I am increasing the confinement ratio to 0.52 first by decreasing the confinement size that is that red line that with the triangle symbols and again I am uh, going to that 5.52 confinement ratio by uh, increasing the vortex ring size for that uh, same thing as this one. Now in the case of decreasing confinement ratio the decay decreases and for increasing vortex ring the decay reduces. And moreover, you can see that uh, that red and that black line, they are for the same vortex ring. So to an extent, they evolves almost similarly. But after some time, the decay, that circulation line that deviates from that uh, other one. So that is because the confinement walls are coming closer. And actually, that might be the place where the vortex ring feels the existence of the viscous wall. So here is the evolution of uh, omega max. Uh, uh, here that uh, again uh, same we are doing the same exercise like uh, from uh, 
a confinement ratio, increasing the confinement ratio, one by decreasing that uh, confinement and another by decreasing the, uh, increasing the vortex ring size. So here the black lines are for uh, diagonal plane and uh, uh, red lines are for the, for the biplane. So here again you can see uh, by increasing the vortex, uh, by reducing the uh, confinement ratio, uh, the DK becomes faster up to an extent and there is an increase in the vorticity. This happens because of the asymmetry and uh, stretching of the vortex ring. So there is an increase in the vort vorticity at the center. And apart from that, uh, the other one, the DK rates are clearly slower when we increase the confinement ratio by increasing the vortex ring size. Now here is the evolution of core area uh, of the vortex ring. So here again the till some extent the ring evolves the same way as that uh, lower confinement ratio after that when it feels that the uh, wall is there then the decay patterns deviates and the area also here that uh, decreases. The decrease in the area happens mostly because of the stretching of the vortex core that uh, there is an asymmetry that is uh, formed and because of that the vortex ring stretches so it reduces the core area. Now here uh, yeah now this is the radius of gyration so here what you can see is like till that till the point where uh, that uh, area started reducing, uh, it follows the same path as that uh, lower confinement ratio. After that on the Y plane the radius of gyration is increasing and on the uh, Y plane it is reducing. So what happens is that uh, in both cases the radio red area reduces. So it's, it's like a uh, skewing of the area happens. So that's why, so uh, that uh, uh, that uh, radius of gyration can give us a measure of how uh, skewed or uh, skewed the core of the uh, vortex ring is. Now here I'm just tracking the center of the vortex line, uh, so with uh, different quantities. So I need, so to track the center, I need to know what how I need to define the center. Here it is based on the area centroid. That I'm calculating the area of the core. So from that core, I'm uh, given the core area. I'm calculating the centroid of the core. So here, what you can see, the in the initial stages of its development, the vortex ring gets shrinked. The size of the uh, ring radius reduces, and it is getting shrinked. Now, after some time, the it increases. That might be because of the uh, asymmetry and the subsequent stretching of the vortex ring. So here the same thing that I am defining uh, with the different uh, other two means uh, defining the vortex center with other two parameters like uh, what vorticity center and the omega max. Here again the omega max you can see that is uh, getting uh, means uh, uh, the omega max value on the diagonal plane that is uh, getting reduced that shows the asymmetry that is being formed on the uh, vortex ring. Yeah. So in order to conclude, so let me, so the main thing is like that uh, what we have to say is like the dependence of DK, confined, dependence of DK on confinement ratio alone, we cannot say because we cannot make any model for a DK pattern just based on the confinement ratio. Now the vortex ring shrinks as the walls are brought closer. There is a shrinking in the vortex ring size and there is an asymmetry in evolution when the confinement is the confinement that we are introducing is asymmet uh, asymmetric, uh, non axisymmetric. Uh, so yeah, thank you. So if you have any questions you can ask. Yeah, square. yeah, yeah. Let's say your result, let's say you are doing the simulation in uh, for a cylindrical coordinate. Yeah. And then you think that the, the result will be the same or? 
So, so in that case, if the if I do the simulation in cylindrical coordinates, I need to keep the walls like a cubical wall. I have to keep in the cylindrical coordinates. If I keep a cubical wall, the walls are like uh, straight walls, not the uh, uh, circular wall. If I keep that thing, then I can say, but uh, I haven't done that one. I might, okay, I think uh, my lab mates, actually they're using that cylindrical coordinates. I might try that also, yeah. Because you are more rather than plane. Yeah. So in some ways you are in four different, whereas uh, are there four rings or many rings? No, 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 no. Uh, that uh, side walls are uh, uh, walls. So only I am giving. No walls. It is wall. Slip. Uh, not slip, no slip walls. No slip? Yeah. Uh, you are not simulating the area for CCD on the, on the wall? Pardon? It's not uh, generating any for CCD because you, the yeah. vortex ring. Yeah. yeah you don't have a for CCD on the wall? Yeah, it, it is there. What is it is generated on the walls. But what I have, what the movie that I have shown, the based on the movie that you are asking, that is based on the Q criterion. I have simulated that movie based on Q criterion. Uh, No. No. See, yes, you are asking me whether I have done on the. I. Yeah, as of now, I have not done any. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Is that or maybe one yeah. very quick? Yeah, yeah, that is there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ours is Gaussian, yeah, distribution no. in the, yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, it's a gen initial uh, preliminary study, what you can say, like uh, how that uh, parameters of the vortex ring, whatever be the distribution inside the. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, oh, okay. So as the vortex ring evolves, obviously that uh, that uh, initial Gaussian distribution that is getting changed, but I, as of now, I don't have that uh, how uh, the distribution is changing. That that profiles I do not have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.